Welcome back to Africa This Week. Well, Africa and the world finds itself at a critical point in history when terrorism has grown to become a phenomenon with insurgents having the resilience to strike at will and the power to negotiate for good. From the agony of an endless wait to the hope of a sudden miracle, it is now the case of incontainable joy following the recent return of more than 100 Dapchi schoolgirls from Boko Haram captivity. Joining me to dig deep on Africa this week is D.A. Lee Aigbe, a security expert and a political analyst. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. Very quickly now, what are your thoughts on the recent release of the 101 Dapchi schoolgirls and how that scenario compares with um, the Chibok girls? Okay, okay. I, I want to probably use this medium to thank the government, the federal government for their response or probably ten, trying to adopt the strategy of, they call it the velvet glove, where sometimes the soft approach always gets results. You know, being, being aggressive or trying to be more militant or probably using military force. Mm. So I want to use this opportunity to thank the government for acting in that strategy of getting out the girls back. Some people probably want to write, write, write meanings to it, read meanings to it, by saying maybe it was, maybe it was stage managed. I don't want to look at that aspect of it. But I don't want to also appreciate the government, the federal government and the security forces of responding and taking that as, that's our strategy of probably negotiating with the terrorists to bring out the girls back. But consp uh, making comparison with the Chippewa girls, yeah. there was where the government was very reluctant to take decision, even though probably the pre president tried to even compare himself with the power former president, Jonathan. But mm -hmm. he, the response was very slow, and they didn't probably really adopt the strategy of probably if they want to probably negotiate or use military action. So that's why that period was very, it was, it was seemingly long, and it, the government was not really decisive in what option they really wanted to take up. But this government wanted, okay, let us not approach, let us approach a very soft major approach, that is a velvet glove, where soft approach to get the guests back. Because the, most of the parents are very, really traumatized, and they don't want to just to please Nigerians. And know this is election period. They probably want to declare that at least that uh, rallying point for the people, so that they will have that, the government will be embraced and appreciated. A seemingly long is an understatement when you compare one month with um, a couple of years. Okay, exactly. <laughs> anyway, how would you describe the government's efforts towards the release of these girls? How was their efforts? How do you describe it? It was okay. It was, it was, it was okay. It was, even though people are Nigerians are reading meanings to it, how, you know, initially the president had to visit some states, Benue, Charaba, they had to consult with the people to assure the people that the government, whatever it would take, the government to bring those girls back. They would only adopt that strategy. And they did. And they were able to, we was there the any transparency in this? Definitely, the president was transparent about it, or adopting, or made in a very subtle way, but trying to probably, he made it public that whatever it take, they were ready to negotiate. Mm. You know, like previously, the president would have just said no, or probably you no, know, but he came out publicly, and people were criticizing him that why, why do you have to say you want to negotiate with a terrorist? So he, he was just trying to show that, that he sends it to the people and he, with the plight of the people, particularly the parents, because mm. as he is a father of all, so he wanted to demonstrate that, uh, that fatherly role to the people to show that he cares and, you know, you know. The so definitely, de definitely, some people would have really given us some option to have use the hardline approach, but he decided to okay, let hardline approach you not always get results sometimes. So let's use the soft approach, and which we can see the result now. Well, the federal it. government tells us that the the um, release was unconditional. Do you think a ransom was paid? I'm not yet to probably to say even definitely because since the government said. No, it's your thoughts, just okay. what you think. I think so, definitely, <laughs> definitely, because definitely those kids will be those ch cheaper girls. Uh, uh, Dachi girls were probably in custody. They would probably want to probably they want to make profit out of it. Definitely, it will not just be free for all. That I see it. So definitely, but government will not probably not to admit it because it will probably send a negative signal to the people, to the public, mm -hmm. that they are giving a soft approach to terrorism. Indeed. Well, Amnesty International, in their report, said that the army had a prior knowledge that this abduction was going to take place, and they did nothing to foil the plot. So, how do you think? Um, this can be stopped in the future. I, I read that Amnesty report, uh, but, but it seems they are really hasting, jumping to a conclusion that maybe the military, if they probably look at the terrains of the northeast, mm. it's very, very mass, the, 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 they have a land mass, uh, mass of land. I think Amnesty uh, International is well aware of the land mass of the northeast. 
Definitely. Well, no, there are not many true people. They're just probably observant and probably, you know. So if you look at, if you look at the psychology, let's see, in, in military psychology, you call it fatigue, battle fatigue, at certain amount of, the, most of the, those personnel. Mm. Most of them are not even trained enough to combat terrorism. Now, terrorism is not too part of, not part of this, it's not too part of our culture initially. So when you book around now with the, with the partnership to ISIS, and now, when we talk about terrorism, we always make reference to foreign countries, America and everything, Israel. But now, too, I've not seen terrorism in another the last scale in Nigeria. You know, they have the perception that Nigerians are fearful, they don't want to die. You can see suicide bombers now, people trying to take their lives and the aspects of, you know. So you have to look at that aspect of it. So the, most of the military people are not really trained. So they're probably, they were even trained in haste. In you know, they had to now when the president came on board, he now said he go to liaise with some of the uh, regions, the regional people to probably train. You know, initially the American government were very reluctant to probably uh, to join force with the pre former president Joe Lockup, to the attitude of the government and to control the response towards the, uh, the Chibok girls. So, but the Malaysian elite were not really trained for terrorism. Terrorism is a new form of dimension in this part of the world. So, no, so definitely the, the military would have been they would fatigued. They call it what called battle fatigue. Would have set in. And so maybe that, at that point of time, you know, people they have families at home. They have children. They want to probably know. You know, so I want to appraise the, the Nigerian military force, the security. It's not easy to do, do law, law enforcement and police in this part of the world because the incentives are not always dead for them to probably to motivate them, to prepare them to deliver. Uh, this particular abduction had no signature trait of Boko Haram. For instance, no group claimed responsibility okay. and we actually saw no video. And, and that's one of the traits of Boko Haram. They of always course, release a video. video. So do you think this could have been carried out by a rogue group? Well, I will not, I will not uh, jump to a conclusion like that. Mm. But probably, you know, the food around people are no, according to the president, have been taken out of the So they may not have the power, far power as it were. You know, so we're just to, okay, be able to get relevance, you know, have been overshadowed with the, with the, with the, the power forces of the, mili of the military and mm. the uh, combined forces. So the, in way of probably, you know, this, this, this is suggesting or this has been more than, more than five years now. So fatigue could have set in their own aspect of it, maybe in terms of equipment. So they don't, okay, let us get an app. You know, we can use a non-conventional non way of probably getting attention. Just like when the Al-Qaeda the Al -Qaeda attacked on the World Trade Center in 2001, mm. they used the normal conventional uh, system of probably hijacking the plane, hitting on the World Trade Center to get attention. It was on call for, it was not, it's just a normal procedure compared to if, if assuming you want to probably take a high-tech technology, you know, they cannot match up with the American uh, uh, military. Mm. So they, maybe they would have used that, uh, I'm speculating, and maybe they would have used that ta tactics. They had even tactics in military in warfare in of get, getting your attention. So they decided to adopt, just like with the president now, the federal government is trying to use a soft measure of trying to get, even president, even according to the news we, I we just listened to, he said, President, okay, they're trying to amnesty, amnesty to those who are ready to lay down their arms. So uh, the president is trying to adopt the former late president, Yaradua's strategy of giving amnesty to the militants. Mm -hmm. So you could see the result of it. So maybe his intelligent people say, Mr. President, let's adopt this major because the military forces is training our military, that fatigue is setting in, battle fatigue is coming in. So let us use another strategy of People perceive you're a military man, so you want to be aggressive and no, use another soft measure. It doesn't make you weak, but trying to at least win this battle. So maybe the president using that strategy of okay, if you lay, lay your hands and call the amnesty people, call the this, because these people have been brainwashed. There's a, there's a cycle going on in the mind that uh, uh, Western education is uh, not, no, it's not uh, called for. So the president should call them what do you people want. How can we want peace? Because the president said he wants peace. Because we need peace in the election now. We're going to the election period. So, President can just, okay, as a father, we are father of all, we're not trying to make you feel a classy, maybe make you feel to, we want to just carry you along and negotiate with you. So, well, it's good you mentioned this because I was going to ask you, okay. you know, that um, the President had offered amnesty exactly. to those who are willing to lay mm -hmm. down their mm -hmm. arms. Yeah. But do you think that this strategy will and can it work? It will work, definitely, it has worked. Because you can't just always use the hardline approach. The, if you try to use violence, it will cost you personnel, it costs a lot of money. So laying hands, given that MSU show that the president is trying to, okay, embrace all of them as a father, as a father of all and the president of the country. Why do we still see pockets of um, suicide bombings here and there? Well, uh, they're trying to get attention because of the, the impact of the Boko Haram, as it were then, when mm. you know, it was not as very visible or active, you know. 
you know, so they're trying to probably get a little attention. We're still relevant. We're still, if you look at period to we're when still we, operational. Well, we were still operational, okay. we look at how they declared the state, they had to make an allegiance with ISIS. Mm. And it was when there was a massive, massive uh, uprising against them, they regrouped again after some time. So, you know, there's a way of regrouping. You know, so one of the region, one of the issues I've discovered in the uh, North East region. Not just regrouping, but also having different factions now. There's different factions, exactly. Okay. exactly. So they're, they're, they're grouping massively. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder how, because the region is highly, highly not developed. There's a lack of education. People are vulnerable. You know, so there's a way they, they psych them up to probably motivate them. I was thinking to one of the, uh, uh, Dangote were giving an example that if these people are busy, that the way to cure this book around is creating massive unemployment for, massive employment for them. Because if they're really busy, they will not have the opportunity to, re to regroup and probably uh, recruit them. I wish we could go on and ask you um, uh, what sort of, uh, sort of employment um, to get for these people, but we've but, well, they, they so can, much. They can get engaged. They can get some, you know, they can get into farming. You know, Run probably. out of time okay. now. <laughs> the Lee Aigbe, security <laughs> expert oh. and political analyst. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Thank you very much. Africa My pleasure history. to be here. Thank, Thank you very much. Well, it's the end of another shocking week mixed with gratitude in Daptree Town, where families are likely not attempting to take the risk of sending their girls back to school. And after more than eight years of going on rampage, it is time for Nigerians in high places to stop playing politics with agents of brutality, but ensure that never again will school children be abducted. I have been your guide, Fadisha Shotingwa. Thank you for watching and bye for now. Thank you.